In integral 1, the curve C, which is in black, lay inside C sub 2, and as a result we had a Taylor series. However, in integral 2, which is involving the green contour C1, the black contour C is outside of C1. Therefore, we have to adjust our approach because our, cur our curve included Z. Because when we had our curve which included Z, we had the following rad radius of convergence, which allowed us to power series expand in Z minus Z0. Now, as I previously said, we have to swap the two of these in order to get our power series to converge, which means we're going to expand in powers of Z prime rather than Z. Here is the integral we are looking to solve. In the past, when we discussed the Taylor series, we had 1 over Z prime minus Z was equal to this here. We still have 1 over Z prime minus Z, but we actually have to expand using a different power series. And if we swap the if we swap it around, we can see we can we can get it in this particular form here. And as a result, we're going to be able to expand in powers of z prime minus z zero. We follow the exact same approach as we did with the Taylor series. We remember the formula, one over one minus q, which when applied gives us this particular expression for one over z prime minus z. Note once again, I've grouped all the terms up to n and left the n plus one term out and so on. I don't really want to dwell on the, the algebra. So we have our expression. The integral here, using the power series expansion and plugging back in the integrals can be written in a very similar fashion as we did with the Taylor series. And we have a remainder again. Once again, I won't explain why, but the remainder goes to zero as we let n go to infinity. In doing so, we get our b sub n's. Now the difference between this and what we had in the past is as follows. When we em employ the generalized Cauchy integral theorem, now we're going to have one over z minus z zero in the denominator. If I very quickly pop back to our Taylor series, we see that, excuse me, we see that these, in my apologies for that. We see if we look back at the Taylor series, which is here, the z prime minus z zero terms, in actual fact, when we utilize the generalized Cauchy integral formula, they are in the numerator. So when we invoked the generalized Cauchy integral formula, which is at the bottom of your screen on the right, we got the Taylor series where we had the z minus z zero terms in the numerator. This time, however, this is back to the Lorentz series. This time, however, when we do it, we're going to find that these terms are in actual fact in the denominator. So we can say that the integral I sub two, which corresponds to the B sub M's, can be written in the following power series format, where we go from M is equal to zero to infinity of B sub M divided by Z minus Z zero to M. If you want, you can compare and contrast your B sub M's and your A sub M's. This can all be written compactly if we use a single indice n, which goes from negative to positive infinity, in the following fashion. This is the Lorentz series expansion for a function which is not analytic in the region around the pole. So instead of integrating right down to the pole, we in fact have to use an analyst, and that's how we get at it. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you might also check out universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.